Hi guys and welcome back to Crafty Quilt and Designs. I hope you're well and you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in this world. Guys, we are going to be making a really exciting, beautiful project. Now, it's going to be made from flat quarters and I do show you how to cut it down into the sizes. The blocks come up really nice and big, so I think you're going to finish this one really quickly. Now, this is my second quilt as you go and I'm really enjoying the process. For those of you who have never tried one, this is the one you need to try definitely okay so for those of you who are new here please consider subscribing to the channel and check other tutorials out and sure you're going to see something that you're actually going to enjoy right then for those of you who are with me all the time you are so blooming fantastic you really really are so well done to you and well done for me and a thumbs up to you definitely so give me a like a thumbs up please let me know what you think of the quilt and um, I'd love to hear your comments I really look forward to communicating in, with you that way so uh, you know give me a shout out and let me know what you think right so there will be a pattern down there and while you're down there give me a thumbs up and leave a comment all right then so with that being said let's go check it out and um i'll see you next week happy quilting and bye for now see you later okay so let's get started so we're using fat quarters and we are going to cut it in nine inches square i've already ironed and um, you cannot get 10 inches from a fat quarter we are going to cut it in a way in which we use the whole of the fat quarter quite effectively so i'm going to mark my nine inch here and i'm going to cut now the reason i'm cutting it this way because i want the extra bit on the side here i think you probably get about four inches three and a half four inches and i want to be able to use that again into the quilt i'm just going to double check one two three four five six seven eight nine okay and you just cut all right so you're going to do that twice and once you've done that you will then have your um extra bit on the side in which i actually need There you go, so you get one, two, three, four, as suggested, okay? Once you've cut all of the squares, what you need to do now is to use the leftover strips as much as you can. You can use the yardage as well to back up if you need more, um, or you can cut a whole fat, uh, fat quarter up um, into two and a half inch strips. And I'm just going to cut these here. So get all of your strips ready. I have my darks here and I have my lights here as well. Okay, and then we can get started on making the block. Once you have all of your squares together, you're going to start because how many you feel confident cutting. I am going to just take two for now. And I'm going to stack them up really nicely, edge to edge, making sure it's lined up properly. And all I'm going to do is simply to cut it from point to point there. And you're gonna do this with all of the squares let me just smoosh it over a little bit. I can see a little bit moved. I'm a little bit fussy about this. That's better. There you go. Right, lovely. I just like it really lined up properly. Okay, and then you just cut it from point to point. Now, what we're going to do, because these are two lights I have here, what I am going to do is to take one of my darker colors so one of my darker strips and i'm going to put the dark and the lights together but what i am also going to do i'm going to use this one at the bottom there and i'm going to swap the, the lights around so i could put these two together like so so ensuring that the longer strip goes beyond and i'm going to line it up like so all right so you can do it in those ways or you can choose another contrasting color. So for example, if I wanted to choose this one here, 
and I can go with because there's purple print in this one here and this one is also purple so I could stay with the same color palette for the squares so I'm gonna cut this one just as an example there put that on the side and then I'm going to use this one there so you can okay you can do it like that or if you want you could simply put it back with the original square but I am going to put light against light with different fabrics all right so what we're going to do now is to simply sew it together and obviously the square is going to grow and um, then we're going to trim it up so to get the center you will fold finger press do the same for this one finger press and then add those creases together give it a pin and we're going to sew along there okay so you'll do the same for the dark so I have two darks here of different triangles and I have the lights so with the darks you're going to use the light strips and with the lights you're going to use the dark strips okay it doesn't really matter what colors you have as your triangles as long as you line them up correctly you are also going to find the center again just as I've done before in the white in the light sorry okay and I'm going to sew with the triangle looking at me and that's simply so that I can see the triangle is literally on that edge of the strip okay and you're just going to sew now just be careful when you are sewing this because it is bias edges here and it could possibly stretch so do not stretch the fabric don't pull on the fabric let the feed dogs do the work for you. That's what they're designed for. And just keep adjusting as you go because sometimes the fabric moves. So just ensure that all edges are together. Well, I'm just going to sew off of the triangle. What I'm going to do now is to press this towards, if I sorry, towards the darker fabric. All right. And what we're going to do now is find the middle yet again. So I'm literally lining up the edge there and the point. Okay. And again, do a finger press on the white because that's where you want it. And you do the same for this one front sides together same way and again you sew with the triangle on top the blocks come together very quickly it doesn't take long at all now you can pin as well just to ensure that it doesn't move um, just save yourself a little bit of time, but ideally you should be able to find it back quite easily. And the same applies. And just run it through very quickly. Keeping that quarter inch seam consistent all the time. sewing off onto the strip in the middle lift that out okay and now it's time to actually square it up so again we want it away from the middle because it's a lighter fabric and I'm just going to finger press as I usually do try not to stretch it I'm just going to get the iron onto it now so that middle bit can stay open nicely I'm just going to run it through there now 
now we need to trim I'm just going to do the front also just make sure it's lovely and flat So I would advise to make all of the blocks, then press, then you straighten up. So you can do one process at a time. So that way you, you're not stopping like I have done just to show what you need to do next. <coughs> so we're going to line up the edge of The edge of our block now if you've got a square and a ruler you can do that a square ruler so you can square up once you've trimmed the blocks or cut off the edges the block should come up to 10 inch square so i haven't got one of those to hand at the moment so i'm just going to line up the edge of the fabric right on one of my grid lines here and then i'm going to cut now i'm not going to cut all the way up there because it's pointless i'm just simply cutting off the white fabric here Okay, and with that you would also remove the dog ears also so again just line it all up and trim and you should have a beautiful corner there same with this one just line it up trim line it up and trim okay and that is your block very very easy and beginner friendly so that's my darks and these are my lights Okay, so you can see okay so these are my lights these are my darks and you can see my dark strip here and that's what I'm going to do all right and then I'm going to show you how to lay this all out it's gonna look very scrappy that is the feel I'm going for really but a controlled managed organized planned scrappy is what I'm aiming at okay so let's get started on that okay guys so I've rolled out a row of batting now my batting usually comes in a roll so I roll out the size that I want okay now in this instance here what I did is roll out enough so that I can incorporate how much border I want to add on now I haven't decided whether or not I want to border but because it's a quilt as you go I am going to take into consideration adding on a size border there okay so I've given it roughly about five six inches okay now what I have done also is to lay the batting front side up with the bumpy side and that's easier because then the the quilt blocks usually stick to it quite easily all right so just remember that little trick because the other side is quite smooth okay now I will only consider that for a quilt as you go whereas the other side it doesn't really matter too much when I say the other side I'm referring to the other method of sewing so if you're normally doing a, a, a quilt and you stitching all three layers together I wouldn't say it's a problem as to whether side you put down first to be honest all right because most of the times you will glue base or pin base so what I am going to do now is to lay out which I've done here for my first row so I've done a dark a light a dark a light and of course a dark and I'm referring to the strip in the middle all right because remember we have the two darks separated by the light in the middle there now I know the center of my batting here because it comes in a roll and it was folded okay so I've laid my first block down just to find a center point you don't have to if you want to if you want six across then I'll be okay because I have 35 blocks in total so I have 15 of the darks and 15 of the lights and I'm referring to the sides here all right just so I don't confuse you so I have 30 all together so I'm going to lay five across and six down all right so what I'm going to do now is to sew this on as normal so again no backing fabric is added on because I am going to quilt this by rows which is what I prefer that particular technique all right if you wanted to add on a row of backing ie the size of your first layer of backing then that's fine but I think for me personally I like doing this way because then I can decide as to whether or not I want a border I don't want to incorporate the fabric for the border size and I'm not sure if I'm going to do that I just think it's a waste of fabric but you do what is comfortable for you 
so I'm going to sew this down again as normal so I've laid it out so I know what I want or how I want the blocks to look and I'm doing it kind of double-ish here in the sense that I'm laying the blocks out I like how it looks like if I don't like something then I swap something around so in a sense I'm killing two birds with one stone I don't have to relay and then lay, lay out again it's already done because I've stitched it on so I'm just going to sew front sides together initially and get the whole row stitched down and then I will quilt it okay and I'm going to do all of the rows in that particular way and I'm going to show you how to join the first row and then I will continue to finish the whole quilt top all right, but just remember before you cut your batting make sure you incorporate the border if you are going to do that all right so I've set up my machine to start sewing my blocks I have my first two on there as normal I have my quarter foot inch feet on and I have set my stitch length to three so that it moves a little bit more quickly because obviously there's a lot of fabric there um, so it's kind of piecing on the batting but I still want it to move quite easily so I'm just simply going to sew really and that's simply it and once I get to the end I am then going to add fold over and add the other one right and notice I sew off the batting okay because I don't want to just stop right at the end and then um, the thread can become unraveled so I'm just going to move that aside and I'm going to open this out and I'm going to add the other one all right so Obviously, this is my darks here, and I should be adding on a light to this one here. Okay, now remember, I have already rolled it out, so ideally, it should be. I'm sorry when I say, well, I've already placed, have all my blocks already, so I know which one comes next. I'm just going to put that on there. Now, what you can do, let me just make sure I make this very clear before I move on and get this out of the way what you can do here once you've added it on is to just add a pin if you feel that it's going to move but it really shouldn't because we have the bumpy side here all right so smooth rough side okay so if you want to put a pin down because sometimes it can relax and you can see it leaves a little puff in the corner there so if you smoothen it out you should be okay all right and then you add a pin and then add the other one and continue to sew all right so remember it is um, five across so i'm going to add on another two here and then the others on the other side okay okay so i have quilted the first one at the top up here and now what i have done is to line up the second row which is not quilted again it's just on the rough side so that the blocks stay attached to the batting itself now it's coming together really nicely i will show you how to join the rows together but you're going to do the same now what i really wanted to point out is um, to just simply try and line up so for example in the corner over here where it's not the same length so make sure that the, the first block starts where the last block end or the first block here starts in the same line as this one there so we need to ensure that is done properly okay so what it essentially means is that once you trim it's a nice straight line quite easily all right um so that is the option there so i'll just show you that to you very closely there so you can see those lines in the corner there together matched up nicely and um what you need to do is obviously as we did the first time now i have made some changes i've trimmed off the batting so i've decided now i'm not going to go ahead with the border so i'm just going to make the quilt and bind it as normal all right and then once i've stitched on the row and quilt it what I will do is then show you how to join the rows right so that's coming along really nicely okay so I'm gonna get started on that now and then I'll show you how to join the rows together mm -hmm. 
all right so once you have quilted um, now it's time to trim so you need to trim off the excess batting like I've started here so line it up along the edge and then cut all the way down okay and you do that for all of your strips all right and then we're going to join it so quilting is just as you would the only difference here is that you're quilting the whole row rather than quilting an individual and it's a lot more easier under the um, throat space so you don't have that pressure of having this big bulky, bulky quilt underneath there but let's trim this all up get it all completed and then I'll show you how to join the rows together to form the whole quilt top all right guys so all of the rows have been quilted now now what I wanted to say if you wanted to put your backing on you can all right you can it will just mean that you will then have to make a strip to put all the way along the rows to show them their join at the back all right you can do that and also at the front okay but you can add the backing on if you want so for example um, once you added the back in on, as you do your row, you will still have individual rows, but they'll be all um, quilted both sides rather than I have the batting here exposed. And then when it comes time to join, you will join the same way as I'm doing now. But the only difference is when it comes to, to the back of the fabric, you will then have to use a strip. I would probably say a two and a half inch strip folded in a particular way um, to hide that seam, that unfinished seam, all right? Nevertheless, I like doing it this way because um, I just think it's a lot more simplified and I don't have to worry about then adding that strip. So to join the rows as they are, you're definitely going to need your pins for this one. Line them up at the end there and make sure that every intersection meets now for example if something like this occurs what I would expect you to do is to move it along and join it okay so that they all meet up and you need to pin as well so that they don't move all right now for example when you get to the end and I'll move up on this side let's say after joining the blocks together at every point so making sure these edges meet here as well you know the center blocks meet here as well if for some reason you get to the end here and it's like this well the only objective here is to trim it up so that it's nice and it's all the same size so that shouldn't really make an impact but I don't think that's going to happen here because I made sure that once I was adding on the block I measured it there so that that wouldn't happen and I can see by just putting it out here everything lines up quite easily all right so all I'm going to do now is to fold it over and again line up those um, seam lines there as you would if you're actually doing patchwork all right so you're nesting those seams there and then you're going to pin and go all the way down and ensure that everything is lined up properly all right so let's move on to that now all right so once all of the rows have been stitched together you now need to um, just open up the seams and press it now what you can do is do them two at a time rather than having the whole quilt top and then pressing the whole seam so for example I've got two here and all I'm going to do is finger press it open so I'm just preparing a space so that when I bring the iron in it goes through or it, it lays it down a lot more easily so just sort of a, a pre-planning ahead all right now the importance here is to just flatten those seams so that once you've added the backing on you can just it it will be flat it would not be bulky so that's that's a very important step if you do miss that step you will find that once you're adding the back you will see it puckering so it's very important that you flatten those seams so I'm going to continue with that and then once that is completed we'll take it for next step all right so the quilt has been basted now and I've glue based so the next ob objective is to obviously add the other layer on so we've got to stitch it so your options here you could do stitch in the ditch or you can stitch on both sides or you can stitch at every seam line so you can stitch like so and literally follow the pattern on the quilt top all right so you, your quilt top actually has an x and you can follow that 
um, pattern for your stitching to actually have all those three layers together all right so I'm not sure which, what I'm going to do whether it's a stitch on both sides or follow it down I'm not sure at the moment but um, I'm sure I'll figure it out by the time I get to the sewing machine so I'm going to get started in that and then I will show you the completed quilt all right guys so the quilt is completed this quilt as you go is gorgeous one of my favorite prints is this one here I think it is so beautiful every time I look at it all I can see in my head is making a star print or a star pattern out of it I just think it's so beautiful now there are 35 blocks in here and I think I mentioned the quilt size already which is 60 by 50 I did quilting in each of the rows quite differently so for example this one was a little bit of feather and I didn't do proper feathers I was literally playing around with this I was literally playing I'll be very honest about that I wasn't really taking my time with this I was just playing around with it to see what sort of quilting patterns um, comes to my head because sometimes I do get a little bit bored I'll be honest if I'm quilting the same thing so I do try to do different things just so that you know it helps me to build my quilting collection so to speak um, but this pattern is beautiful I love it absolutely gorgeous and simple to make quick quilt you can make it bigger if you wish the collection is a garden print so lots of flowers everywhere really really beautiful and um, I use white for the binding on the back absolutely gorgeous beautiful butterfly print and I also did I followed the lines of the crisscross on the back so you get that quilting pattern at the back there as well which just comes about really beautifully also I just love the binding I was a little bit unsure as to what color to use for the binding I had so many options and I thought oh everything else is just doesn't pop but I said oh let me try white and I was happy with it I don't always choose white for the binding but nevertheless I thought this one worked out really beautifully love 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 the butterfly print again it's also part of the garden collection but very beautiful quilt very nice and light has a little bit of a um, beautiful texture to it because of all of the quilting and again guys this quilt as you go method works it really does work you do not have to do the blocks individually you don't have to I think personally it's a longer process if you do not want to do the quilting at the back like I have done and followed all of the patchwork you don't have to you can just do uh, a stitch in the ditch and be over with it but if you also want to emphasize and show up what the pattern is on the front you can then follow it and then make a beautiful grid pattern at the back but this quilt is gorgeous it's um, really exciting to make it it's a short project it only took me four days to compile it and in between those four days I actually stopped I stopped for two because my husband was home on the weekend had it not been for that I probably would have completed it in the two days really quick project beautiful and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed the video support me by subscribing liking and giving me a thumbs up okay guys so with that being said that's all I have for you today enjoy the quilt enjoy the tutorial and I will see you next time on crafty quilting designs bye for now and as I usually say happy quilting guys have a good one love you lots bye